right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1985 Chrysler LeBaron. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here LeBaron for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that this is a proper K car. So this is what's called a K platform vehicle from Chrysler. And we'll talk a lot about that in my final thoughts segment, the history of this car and why it is so, so dang important to automotive history. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you'd get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 2.2 liter under the hood and was pretty much copied and pasted from a lot of other Chrysler products at the time. We have to remember that this is a direct response to the fuel crisis of the 1970s. Imports from Japan always had four cylinders and they were becoming more and more popular in the American market. So that's why Chrysler opted to go with a four cylinder to save fuel and to battle the Japanese. So nothing to write home about underneath the hood. Down below, we do have a three speed automatic transmission. Again, nothing to write home about, not very special, keen or interesting, and that's okay. Last but not least about the drivetrain of the LeBaron, it is front wheel drive. So that's stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some very interesting gauges. Off to the left, I have my warning lights, fasten seatbelts and fuel. In the center, I get the speedometer, which the needle kind of looks like a cigarette, interestingly enough. And then off to the right, I have my message center. Very, very interesting. On the steering wheel, I do get this very nice diamond logo, as well as two thumb horn buttons. And overall, the steering wheel is very large, but it works. Off to the left, I have a climate control vent, headlight switch, and my rear defrost. And on the door, I have my latch to get in and out. Down below here, I do have my crank for the windows. And then over by my left elbow, I have the power locks and a giant grab handle. This reminds me a lot of Cadillacs of a similar vintage. Moving into the center, I do have the original radio. I love the look of it. It's very physical has a lot of turn dials and knobs and just definitely has that older feel to it, which I love. And then I have the climate controls down below. I do have AC. This car was outfitted with air conditioning, which was a nice feature, but unfortunately it has stopped working. I do also have a cigarette lighter, something that you don't really see in modern cars anymore up on the dash. Then I do get an ashtray that pops out down below for said cigarette lighter. Then I don't have a center console, meaning I get tons of right leg room, which is fantastic and I really really love. Moving on to the seats, well, it's a giant bench seat up front. It's very, very cushiony, very soft, and really helps soak up the bumps that the suspension might miss. So it's actually a very nice driving, cruising experience. However, because of this giant bench seat, I don't have any cup holders, also because it's an 80s car. So unfortunately, the 1985 Chrysler LeBaron fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> All right, so we're in the back of the 1985 Chrysler LeBaron, and a couple of things to note. First of all, I do have ashtrays, of course, because it is an 80s American car. You gotta have ashtrays, but actually when the seat is back, it's a little cramped back here. My head is hitting the ceiling. Now the ceiling is sagging a little bit because it's an 80s car, but that's not that big of a deal. I don't have shoulder belts back here. I only get lap belts, which is kind of interesting, but the actual seat material itself is very, very comfortable. And that's what I love about cars of this era. Let's go hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 85 LeBaron, and it is an American car from the 80s, so it has plenty of trunk space, which I really, truly miss in cars and sedans and coupes like this. So nothing really too crazy to write home about, not any crazy features or tool kits or anything like that, but definitely an adequate amount of space. Now we got to talk about the looks and I really like the look of the LeBaron. It is sort of angular like the cars of the 70s, but it's small. It's pocket sized. It's vastly shorter than the R bodies that came before it in the late 70s. So I love that about it. I like the design of it. It's just so iconic to me. And so as we get towards the end of the video in the final thoughts segment, now first I do wanna to touch on the LeBaron name because I found this story kind of interesting. The LeBaron gets its name from an old coach builder 
called LeBaron. They used to design cars and bodies for companies like Lincoln, Packard, and Chrysler from 1920 till 1953, where they were absorbed into the Chrysler Corporation. So I thought that that was really neat that they used the name of an old coach builder that had been around since the 20s. I like those legacy names. Why is this car so important and why did I title this video the butterfly effect. Well, back in the late 1970s, with the oil crisis and everything going on, Chrysler was out of money. They were broke. In a last ditch effort, they hired a recent ex-Ford employee by the name of Lee Iacocca. Now, when Lee Iacocca stepped in, the K car was already an idea. He didn't formulate the idea but he gave it all of his time and energy and developed the K platform. So this car is known as a K car, the letter K dash C-A-R. And so what Chrysler ended up doing was building as many cars as they physically could based off of this same exact platform. The idea was to share as many parts between cars as they could, because in the 70s, Chrysler had so many different models that it was costing them a fortune to manufacture a window switch for this car, and then a different window switch for that car, and a different window switch for that car. Iacocca said, no more. We're gonna share parts between all the different vehicles. And it ended up saving Chrysler millions of dollars. And so in 1982, Chrysler reported profits for the first time in that decade because of this car. They were able to make them cheap and in so many different flavors that there was a K car for everyone. They had business sedans, coupes, convertibles, and even the early minivans were based off of this car. And in turn, it saved Chrysler. Chrysler is still around today because of cars like this. If you love your Dodge Hellcat, you have this car to thank. If you like your new Ram 1500, you have this car to thank. If you love your Jeep, if you love Cherokees and SRT8s and Wranglers and Rubicons, well, you have this car to thank because Chrysler was so successful with this vehicle that they actually had the money to purchase the Jeep name in the late 80s from AMC. And so those Jeep XJs from the 90s that are so beloved, well, you can thank this car for that. The minivan craze. Well, you can thank this car for that because the original Dodge Caravan was based off of this same platform. And the Dodge Caravan was like the staple. That was like the minivan in the 80s that started the craze. You're welcome, Dodge Caravan. You're welcome. And so it blows my mind thinking about what could have happened if Chrysler didn't developed the K platform and they ended up going bankrupt. And they would have because the US government denied their request for a bailout. They said, you gotta change something up if you want a bailout. And so when Lee Iacocca got a giant loan to build the K cars, he paid it back seven years earlier than when the loan was supposed to expire. That's how successful these cars were. And it's a shame because we don't really see them anymore, but they're so culturally important. This is the most important car that Chrysler ever built. In my book, the K car and K platform is hands down the most important thing that Chrysler ever did for themselves because they would not be here today if it weren't for this car. And that is super, super cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Kevin for letting me take out his Chrysler LeBaron, as well as the Gilmore Auto Museum for letting us get a couple of shots in their vintage scenery. You gotta check out the Gilmore Auto Museum. They're fantastic. And I can't thank both them and Kevin enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Oh,